Hello, this is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. We are your hosts, Lehman, Jay, and Mark, and today we will be talking about cultures and societies and things like that from Pan Pacifica. So continuing our trend and getting to the last uh, invading reality. But before we get into that, we do have an email from Luke that I wanted to read and we could uh, discuss that for a little bit. But um, like Luke, you can email us at torgdcd at gmail.com and send us any questions you might have, any comments, etc. And we will read those in a future episode. So let's just dive in to this email. Hi all, enjoying all the podcasts. Keep up the great work. A few questions. Uh, number one, when the cyber papacy Hexer Mark IV contains a demon, does this automatic happen automatically when that demon is accidentally summoned, or does a free action need to be taken to make this happen? I like to think it happens the same way that it does in the original Ghostbusters when Ray Stance used a trap on the ghost. Um, number two, would a song that was written in Core Earth in its social axiom but performed in a cosm with a lower social axiom, e.g. a jazz version of a modern song in the Nile Empire or a bard performs a modern song in an Eilish tavern, need to be performed by possibility rated people to not cause a contradiction and disconnect in the lower social axiom cosm? And number three, can you use the storyteller perk over the internet, net, e.g. YouTube, TikTok, etc.? Thanks, Luke. So thank you, Luke, for uh, writing in. So let's hit this first question. When the cyber papacy hexer Mark IV contains a demon, does this happen automatically when the demon is accidentally summoned, or does a free action need to be taken to make this happen? I like to think that it happens the same way as in Ghostbusters. So from the book, we just have the Mark IV is the current state-of-the-art device and a backlash mitigation and can actually contain a single demon accidentally summoned by the Cyber Witch, such as by the heretical magic card, and place it in storage. While stored, the implant crackles with energy causes a negative penalty to spell casting tests the demon may be released as a free action or exercise so it, to me it doesn't say so what are your thoughts on that jay um i would expect because you i can't remember do you have to buy all of these in order or you you just take one of yes. them yes E each they of them one on top of the other yeah exactly. yeah so it's um, 20, I've always yeah i've always looked at it as it happens immediately it happens the exact same way the shock absorption happens um otherwise that's paying a lot for having to take another action and maybe get beaten up on your turn like when it's not your turn yet you know um so yeah i i would i would basically say it just happens automatically personally what are your thoughts mark I love the uh, I love Luke's uh, alliteration of how this works is Ghostbusters uh, ghost trap going off. That's fantastic. I think that that's how it ought to be for everybody. Um, however, as Liam and pointed out, it doesn't really say in the book. So uh, some table, as we say, in to organized play, you're going to get some table variation, um, as we say on this podcast. Uh, it's your cause and verse. How do you want it to have happen? I'm going to have Ray Stance's ghost trap go off. And in this case, it's going to be a demon trap and suck them into the demon because I like without an action um, to to be specific. And to uh, Jay's point, there's a lot of money goes into or a lot of experience goes into that that getting to this level. And if you've spent that experience to get here, you ought to get a benefit from it. And I think that the reason you come here is specifically so you don't have to deal with the demon. So, oh, I summoned a demon. Guess what? Now my arm is crackling and I got problems. I got different problems, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't have demon right. problems. So I, I would agree with both of you. I would have it just happen, um, not necessarily take an action or anything. You've each each of the hexers, the Mark One, Two, Three, and Four, all all cost five thousand. Um, if you use 
perks you know you'd use perks to to buy these if you did the the first cyberware perk and then the um the two more I, yeah, the the one is eight thousand. I'm trying oh, to Oh the recalibrated. Re, re, yeah, recalibrated and then the extra or this this then the cyberware perk for a second time for a, another five thousand. It's gonna take uh three perks to get that, which is quite a bit. Plus you would have to be very focused and allow those extra money monetary hang around and not spend it on other things because i know some people kind of you, you get that ten thousand, you buy those first two that's fine but then you have eight thousand and then you have three thousand hanging around you know to, what do you do with those you, you spend it you wait what's going on so it, it'll take three three perks i think that is is worth it just automatically happening um and as mark said and i read you have that implant crackling, and it is going to cause you negative two to all spell casting tests. So even it, it, there, there is a few downsides to it. So thanks for that question. Uh, the number two question was about a song written in Core Earth. I guess this could apply also to any other uh, re realities that have a higher social axiom but are performed with a lower social axiom. Um, so what are your thoughts on that, Jay? I don't think songs really have a social axiom per se. Like, I, I was looking at the axiom tracks, and there's nothing that really jumped out at me. Like, it's usually way larger scale <laughs> kind of things. So in theory, like, it might talk about concepts, but concepts can just be fiction anyway, and that's not necessarily... Um, causing a contradiction just to talk about something you're more likely i think to come into play with like tech uh problems if someone's trying to play their cool synth uh, or something in orosh but i don't think that just having a song about concepts is necessarily going to be um a a disconnection threat unless it's like it, somewhere with a social axiom of zero mm -hmm. and no one can communicate in any way basically so, Mark, what would your thoughts be about a a song written in a higher social axiom but performed in a lower social axiom? I think so. If if we look at the the social the list of social axiom steps on page two thirty and two thirty one, five is where art appears, right? So you've got a really low level where art appears, and that's just a you know an esoteric concept of art as a whole music is art right so the notes the notes of music are not in and of themselves you know highly technical how you write them down might be so you know what are you how are you communicating you know written language how are you communicating your music um if it's an oral an oral tradition then you play the notes and you teach someone else to play the notes and there's nothing written down you just teach them to play it so i would say you can get it all the way down to an axiom of five um but you know real realistically at 10 you've got educational institutions and symbolic writing systems going on so 10 is probably where you might want to get to the complexity of cuz 5 is like cave art stuff right mm -hmm. 10 is kind of where you get to the complexity of of technical art techno technologically advanced art maybe the 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 concept of of the scales and the musical notes and how to put them together and sharps and flats and all that stuff that goes into you know m music and what we think about as that artistic form i would say that that the communication of the concept and the, the itself wouldn't be that difficult depending on what direction you wanted to go up or down the social axiom but it'd have to be it, you'd have it's really this is a this is a depends kind of answer because it really depends on how are you communicating it and how are you trying to play it and how is it written originally because you can play mozart i mean we had you know hooked on bach and hooked on mozart and all that kind of stuff in the 80s where they they did all of that classical music on synthesizers the notes aren't the, exactly the same you just played them on a technologically advanced instrument instead of the you know the strings and the woodwinds and all the rest of that stuff that they were written for so 
did that you know did that break the social axiom no you just you're handing the music up and down and whoever gets it plays it with what they know so it, it might be an interesting exercise to to see how that moves one way to the other but i don't think it i don't think you can't do it it just changes how the performance happens in my opinion Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit like off <laughs> on on the discussion. So as, as you both kind of pointed out, there's a tech part of the what type of instrument are you using? So that could be a, if, if you're playing it on an electric piano in aisle, then yes, you're probably, you know, you're making a contradiction. If we just talk about let's take away the instrument, and just go, get like singing. Um, I am going to butcher this if I try to get into detail. So I will say that on YouTube there is a very detailed, and eighty percent of it went over my head. But I listened to the whole thing. Was a guy talking about how bardcore and other <laughs> modern medieval music that we might see in either historical or historical fantasy type movies and tv series sound a medieval to us but are in fact written in a modern sense of how harmony and melodies and and again i'm going to butcher terms because i am not a musical app adept person you're doing but, great <laughs> but there is like a modern way that we do things and then there was a medieval way that they did things which was in a, a, a different combination of say like ancient greeks and romans did when they did uh plays and, and their own music and when you would listen to how a a modern song is done with the bard core which um I guess some people use as kind of a, a bad slang, but I'm just using it like that person used it, which is, um, and I wish I remembered the name, but it was basically a modern framework that sounds to us modern people as medieval, but it's not. If you wanted to use that in a social axiom, I would say then you're just doing pretend fantasy or lower social, you're actually not. But if you would take a modern song and then you would play it in that music, or you would sing that in that musical way that they sang in the medieval times or even uh, before that, then I would say that that would be fine. Again, as, as Mark said, that's kind of something that you'd have to figure out. Do you really want to go that in detail about your, your bard singing a song? But I think is an interesting thing if you would bring that up. And if a character really wanted to be like a bard of all realities and wanted that as a central theme, I think that could be worth digging into. But if it's just a game master wondering, hey, should I have this guy disconnect or have a chance to disconnect or not, um, how, how, how involved and how pertinent to the plot and the story is it? Um, the other thing that I highly recommend is there is a YouTube channel called There I Ruined It. And that's where somebody will take, uh, they use AI and they'll have like modern songs sung in what seems like voices of older singers, whether it's country music or Elvis singing Baby Got Back. It's quite <laughs> hilarious because it sounds just like, you know, those those uh, previous mu musicians and singers and such, but the lyrics are, are modern. I think there was even a, a Snoop Dogg done in the Jungle Book style. So that's kind of an interesting thing that if you want to go there about mixing modern music with older styles, those would be the place to go. And on YouTube for the other one, I would kind of look at, like modern versus ancient slash bardcore or something and hopefully you could find that long detailed video that went way over my head but it was still very interesting um, you know so we've got a we've got a good example of this that everybody's gonna know johnny be good from the first back to the future movie yeah yep 
Uh-huh. And that kind of goes downhill towards the end when he starts to bring like really modern rock moves that he wants to have in it. To, and everybody's like, and then everybody stops playing. Right. He does, right. <laughs> towards the end. And they're like, well, dude, what are you doing? He's like, okay, well, you're not right. You guys aren't ready for that yet. And then he started disconnecting. Right. And then he disconnected. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, yeah, the, he used the back to the future uh, method. Uh, this actually, for me, kind of segues into the third question was, can you use the storyteller perk over the internet? Um, so what, what are your thoughts on that, Jay? Sure. <laughs> that's, pretty much it. That, that's fine. That's it. Jay's simple, fine. simple, sweet. Mark, you have any thoughts on storyteller over the internet? Um, so I think we've got uh, a long distance or long range contradiction going on there. And so you got to kind of look at how that plays out and how you manage that in I'm paging real quick just to refresh my memory on long distance contradictions because long range contradictions, you know, it's like, that's like firing the, the, um, artillery versus throwing the grenade. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of personally connected to the grenade cause I'm still in contact with it. I can see it. It's still in my range of view and that kind of thing. But the, the artillery is just, you know, I launch it and it's out of view and it's over the horizon kind of stuff. So I, you know, the, again, I think we're back to, table variation and in your own cosm verse kind of thing but you're <laughs> you've got you got radio transmissions and those kinds of cell phones and that kind of thing as an example and i think this kind of falls into that that realm i love the storyteller perk as a perk but you have to have an audience for that um, in my opinion the storyteller perk requires an audience and so if you're on the internet with a, a and you're live streaming it that's different from let me record a video and then send it out and everybody watches the video. I don't think a video would work necessarily, um, but you might have a you might be able to make a better case with a live stream. Well, storyteller then, itself only has to be from within the past month. It doesn't have to be live normally. Well, the action that caused the glory to kick yeah. off is within the last month, but you have to tell you the storyteller is telling the tale. Oh shit! Where's that perk? Um, I want to <laughs> look it up. Uh, because I use that perk, and it's a fantastic, it's a great perk. If you haven't built a character for storyteller, you really, really should because it's fun. Um, is that in the core book? Where did I get that? Yeah, core book. Mm-hmm. Let's go find that real quick, cause that's in reality, right? Uh, there we go. Yep. Uh, after glory card is played, the zone fills with the ambient possibility energy, blah, 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 blah. Telling the tale requires an audience, a performance of the tale- tellers choosing a persuasion test versus a standard modifier. So you've got, you're in the zone that you're in. So I, you know, you're sending it over the internet to a different zone. I don't know that that necessarily applies Tales may be told once per act and only in a zone where the storyteller took part in the playing of a glory. So, you know, from that verbiage right there, I can't send it from this zone into another zone via the Internet. Could I send it around my zone via the Internet? Yeah, that's that could be part of your tale of, of t- the telling. But that's not really I don't think the I don't think that's the the heart of the question on number three is really the the idea of disseminating that across the globe from one zone into another. And, and the verbiage of the storyteller perk kind of precludes that in my opinion. Okay. So I'll say that I actually have a player who plays a social influencer and we haven't determined whether he's uh, Instagram or TikTok <clears throat> or uh facebook or youtube whatever we haven't figured out uh, what it is but he he streams their fights and such and i would completely allow those um to be either used as a glory takes place if he wanted to try to you know get his audience involved um i i would limit it to the zone that it was Mm -hmm. taking place in 
Um, but that is an audience. Or for uh, Jay, with uh, you pointing out the, the month requirement of the glory being done, I could also see where he uh, has recorded stuff while it happened and then later on did a, a live stream or something and presented those videos. And we're like, hey, this is what we were doing over here. And you see this going on. And this was awesome. And we've made this this super duper cool thing happen and and uh, be able to use that. But I, I do love the idea of the storyteller. Um, I, I can say that that player, amongst other players, sometimes presents ideas that at first I groan. And when he said, I want to be a, an influencer, I was like, oh, no. But he's played it extremely well um, and has done lots of cool things. I want to th say, Mark, also, um, there is the inadvertent, I don't know if he took Storyteller or not, but the inner, inadvertent Edenos uh, kind of came up as a ploy and then became a, a thing with uh, Mike's Edenos yeah. b being the the bite the like <laughs> yeah telling, Zyotech, yeah yeah absolutely i was thinking about that but t you know telling his uh subscribers to bite the like <laughs> so there there's there's fun D don't look at it, it was one of the things in original torg every once in a while i would retcon to make it modern so if if certain things you're playing in a year or two are different than they are now don't be f don't think that you're forced to only use what came out in 2017 if there's new stuff coming out just kind of retcon because i always consider it it's the near now and that means it's nearish to now it doesn't mean that it necessarily starts on a a certain day in a certain year so thank i think you very uh much. i think also it's important not to get tripped up on the like there's the difference between the storyteller perk Mm -hmm. And what storytelling used to mean in classic Torg. Right, right. Because th the whole idea was you would have to go, like, after there was a glory, mm -hmm. people would have to go and spread the, the tale. And right. now, you know, for the glory to actually fully sort of percolate through the entire zone, it wouldn't just happen immediately, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the players, in theory, should be doing that. I don't know how much that really happened. Uh, you know, as far as the players, but it's kind of assumed that the Delphi Council, there's like an entire division uh, that is in charge of that, and that's kind of right. happening in the background. So the storyteller perk is really just giving you between one to three possibilities to spend on awards, really. So mm -hmm. it could be a cool thing. Like if you did it and you could show someone a video uh, or something like that, uh, and you know, they're from that zone later in the act, you could do it. Now, one thing I will say, Mark mentioned about not, uh, you know, it should be live. I don't know if it would have to be live, but I would say if you recorded it, you could only use a recording once, right? Like you can't make a recording, see what you rolled, right? And then say, okay, well, I got standard here. We're gonna wait, I'm gonna try, let me save another file here that's a outstanding success. We'll show them that one. No, so right. Like, you only I'll, get, I'll like, remove the first. I'll remove the first one and upload a new video here. Yeah, and yeah, then... but see that that kind of flies against the idea of a recording because that's the whole reason you do multiple takes is to get a yeah. better. Take well, you say until you make you find the role you like, and that's your best one, basically. That's, that's your you best. Find, you ran out of ju yeah. You ran you you yeah. ran out of 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 energy to do anymore. And then Stormbreak will be like, those are all doctored. Uh, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of – I'm going to go against what I said, though, is because I really want – I think that Storyteller ought to be able to work over the internet for zones, for, for realities to support, something like that, the Plexus, the Godnet, those kinds I've of things. I've actually kind of thought of it personally as being one of Court's biggest possible strengths, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. I, oh. I would I – would, if I thought about it, I would want to – I would – want to try and engineer it in some way that the storyteller perk worked outside the zone across the internet if you could successfully get it distributed and and jay that actually triggered a, a thought when i first uh, read this email about it being a really cool thing for core earth one the storyteller is a reality perk um, which is 
it's at least starting out with, it's going to be only four core earth people. The other thing that's been presented is core earth has the imagination. So right. the, whereas say cyber papacy might have the tech to get it, their social and other axioms do not provide the way to get in people out there to do entertainment and to be able to, you know, get people excited about a glory event. Um, even in Pan Pacifica, you're kind of, you know, everything's a little more harsher and more cynical and such that the concept of uh, just being an idiot on the Internet probably <laughs> has has no meaning in other, you know, other realities. And we well, can s- scoff at it, but when it's done to, you know, to tell a story about the glorious deed you did, I think that could be a benefit for core earth didn't we no but we we have a we may have a small problem wasn't there a nile and what's the nile empire mission that had the movie that oh yeah there's and there's also a pan pacific delphi mission about sort of hidden messages and propaganda. yeah because they right. were showing I, i'm not saying showing that the, they the can... movie was being distributed specifically that people who watched the movie got shifted towards right wouldn't am i am i remembering yeah, that i right? think the big difference is in pan pacifica which we're going to be getting to uh, <laughs> eventually bit, everything is put out by the corporations right like you don't really have the freedom to make your own stuff anything you do is owned by a corporation and they can shut it down they can show what they want they can force you to watch what they want you to watch uh dreamland is a tool of mobius's propaganda wing uh, core earth internet any person can put out something or at least western internet like mm-hmm. uh you know anyone can post anything so you get you get a bunch of crazy stuff that you're not going to see in the other even though they're technologically capable of it you're just not really going to see it um even like in the cyber papacy it's like passion plays and things like right. that but I think you would still have like the street, like the the cyber gangers and everything will have their own, um, you know, ways of doing things. But I don't know if they would be recording it in the Godnet. Every anytime someone overrides a hollow emitter, it's more like Viva la Resistance necessarily than showing cat memes. Right. But that would still be a way to do it, though. Like they're, I guess, just not used to it the same way as the storyteller reality perk. Every reality's got to have its own sort of edge and that's part of core earths yeah i I didn't want to say that they can't make movies and they can't provide yeah a a entertainment type thing but it's different it's either for the church for the corporation you know to get people to buy stuff or to you know fall in line um whereas in core earth it's just whatever stupid thing yeah. you want to do or important thing you want to do i mean it's it, kind of tied into the law of glory and mm-hmm. you know in the first see place. and and with it's the serial gambit from uh, delphi missions to nile empire i given that that you can say it's a precedent or not given that that we've got the precedent in in the adventure that you can build that movie and that movie can affect reality because mobius has created a turning shark that does that i don't see any reason why you can't use storyteller from the standpoint of a of a, a storm night to bend what's possible to counteract that mm-hmm. so I, you know i might i might have now, the more we talk about this the <laughs> more i like the idea of using the storyteller perk over the internet um I, given how things are going in perks and things of that nature, I, I would almost want to see maybe that's a maybe that's a tweak. You take the base storyteller perk, and then that's like a tweak to the storyteller perk that you can then, instead of just a, an audience that's there, because there's a, there's a certain amount of charisma to a mm-hmm. person to in person, right? Anybody who's attended a live rock concert knows or or a live sporting event knows there's an absolute difference between attending that mm-hmm. and at uh, that in person or seeing it on your tv the the just the energy of the people around you is is almost palpable in some cases so 
I, I would say that that could be a step you could put on a, on a storyteller perk to be able to go, okay, you can deal with the people here. Now you can deal with people you broadcast. Now you can deal with recordings, that kind of thing. So I don't know. I, I like the idea. I like it a lot. The I guess the, the last thing I want to say about it is I actually have an advanced storyteller perk that allows them to spread that glory to other uh, adjacent zones that because almost nowhere can you just do a glory event in one zone and have it be able to rip up a stele because normally a stele is going to affect multiple zones so that's just an a, a advanced perk you have to have storyteller and then i have the advanced storyteller so that's where i could see where the internet could get that spread to those adjacent zones so that you can pull but that's a not official in any way shape or form that is a house uh, rule per perk homebrew perk that i uh, came up with that's uh, liaman's cosm verse yes that is my cosm verse so let's finally get into pan pacifica <laughs> hey you know if, if we would have had two emails we could have had an email episode <laughs> <laughs> no but that was a good email I'll yeah it, good questions. No, I'll yeah like... th Thank you very much, Luke, for those questions. You got us thinking, and, and I, yeah, I, I like thinking about two and three together and how to sp spin those. So uh, let's move on to uh, Pan Pacifica, different uh, cultures and things like that. So let, let's start with the, the big one, the corporate culture. So, Jay, what would be your thoughts on <clears throat> corporate culture? Well, <laughs> the... the... <laughs> This is a, a long topic, or I guess it depends. Um, so the big the big difference is, yeah, the corporations are everything in Pan Pacifica. The power of the governments themselves has initially been like kneecapped by the contagion. Uh, and then Kanawa and the other corporations have come in and you know generously donated time, resources and slowly but surely not actually not even slowly quickly <laughs> took everything over um and so now the the governments themselves are kind of just a puppet states at this point and it's important to remember one big thing about pan pacifica because pan sometimes people get it into their mind that pan pacifica is the asian uh, reality, but in real, but in actuality, it's the corporate <laughs> reality, or you know, corporate and science gone wrong. It just happens to be in Asia, much like, you know, how Isle is the, the the sort of fantasy D and D ish one, even though it's in England and Scandinavia. You know, it's not actually like medieval England, right? Mm -hmm, right. Um, so. It, that's one of the big things people have to remember, because I, I do recall there was a previous one of these um, debriefings that was done when people were saying that there's no way any of the countries in Asia would ever get together and work together in the way that they do with the Kanawa plan. Mm -hmm. And that's true if it was still core Earth. And right. It's not core Earth anymore. The, the social axiom has gone up to the point where uh, nationalities are no longer seen as a big deal and people have transformed and now they don't see it. Uh, the governments have lost a lot of their power. Uh, in some cases, even like North Korea completely sold it to mm -hmm. Kanawa, you know? So there's a, a lot of things have really changed and these different companies, which may or may not be Kanawa subsidiaries, uh, have basically taken everything over. So what does this look like for the day-to-day -day life? Um, a lot of people are out of work. Uh, they've been put onto a basic income under the Kanawa plan where they're given some income. They're given a free Zuzu. Uh, they are free to use that to rot their brains on the plexus and watch and all the entertainment that has been specifically chosen for them by Kanawa. Um, you know, basically talking about how great everything is. They are just basically taking in constant propaganda they are eating only Kanawa approved food that their basic uh, stipend is allowed to purchase. They're only seeing what they're allowed to see. So you've got anyone coming in from like an outside perspective is seeing something totally different than the, everyone else here. 
first everyone is shell shocked. They've escaped these uh, zombie hordes, and everything is safe. And now they've realized that things have really changed. And much like the cyber papacy, at first things look okay. Uh, you know, hey, at least we're not getting eaten by zombies. Hey, there's food, but it's not good food, uh, you know, unless you are wealthy. If you can get a job with one of the corporations, if you want to sell out like the cyberpunks say uh, and join the corpos, then, yeah, you can live well, but you're still just a replaceable cog in the machine uh, to be disposed of when needed. The company does not care about you unless you are one of the high, high-end executives. You get amazing privileges once you have money. Uh, even though it's a high social axiom and there's not really much care about nationality or ethnicity or gender or sexuality or anything like that, they do care about one thing, and that is money. <laughs> and like, how much do you have? If you don't have much, you're basically nothing. Um, but even the high executives, once you get up into that uh, stratosphere, it's very cutthroat. Everything's happening with daggers behind the back and closed doors. Everything's very quiet. There's not really much in the way of like military um, expansion and, and conflict like in the Nile Empire or Tharkold. But uh, it's all quiet now that the contagion's been taken care of until some corporate executive wants a power play and you just happen to be driving down the freeway and your car gets taken out as collateral damage. So it's a very interesting reality and it's one of the harder ones, I think, to run effectively, kind of like the cyber papacy, because you have to show why it's a bad, right? <laughs> like right. So, some people think it sounds great, you know, it's a basic income for everyone. And then, you know, there's all this stuff, there's no zombies, there's, there's no demons coming out from the sky. You have to show why it's bad, but you have to show why it is still seductive to everybody who's there and why people are stuck in it, and but still allow Storm Knights from other realities to exist there without, you know, just getting arrested or something right away. Um, so it, it kind of requires a bit of a loose uh, reins from the game master. And it can take a little while to to practice it. Because much like Ororsh, the kind of things that you do in the Nile Empire, the Living Land, will get you in trouble really quickly in Pan Pacifica. Um, but yeah, as far as specific companies and um, the way the different countries work, I don't know if you how, how in-depth you want to get about each one or anything like that. But... Um, I can basically pause there. <laughs> I can, yeah, don't know we, how far we, we might want to go. we could actually probably make an entire episode off of the corporate the, the individual corporations and yeah. the the structure. So uh, let, let's just uh, move on to Mark and get his thoughts on the corporate culture. So, uh, like Jay, I very much enjoy Pan Pacifica. I think it's a fantastic place to run a game. Um, and I can go on for quite a while, um, as Jay can and the, and corporations are really the heart and soul of Pan Pacifica. And if you want to build a more robust and rich and vibrant corporate uh, entity and environment in your cosm for Pan Pacifica, I highly encourage you to go find the original version of uh, that cosm because you've got stuff in there like I got to turn off my, my phone which is going off in the background <laughs> um, you've got stuff in there like like a corporate chart of different corporations that an org chart that you can say you know, here are the industry breakdowns and everything and, you, and you've got histories and backgrounds and, and names of, of CEOs and sub uh, executives and middle managers and all of this stuff. And it, it's, it, it really is all about the corporate environment and all about, but, but your, and your identity as a, as a member of society is inextricably tied to your corporation. And it's, you know, it, in, in the States, you know, it's, we don't, we don't live to work. Some folks are defined by their job, but generally speaking, we go to work so that we can have finances to be able to do the things we want to do in Pan Pacifica. 
you are your your job defines you and so people look for ways to improve they look for an angle to improve their position it's hard to do because it's it's kind of a, it's kind of an old school bushido hidden caste system that that's very much you know the, the low lower caste workers and you've you know your father was and this is what you do and you've always been until you get the opportunity to demonstrate your value to the company and it isn't so much it isn't so much that you can't you know you can't be what you want to be but that you have to actually produce something that benefits the company and the company has to realize that that potential for you to actually move up um I see Pan Pacifica a lot like the the same kind of mirroring the cyber papacy in the way that the the Tor, that Torg Eternity has laid out their invasion, in that the contagion showed up, and Pan Pacifica was here for a while. We they were under the surface. We didn't know they were there. They were just kind of all of a sudden some modern, some amazing breakthroughs and some some small leaps that looked like you know this company had a, an amazing technological breakthrough and then this one had one and they were unrelated right because they were in different industries and wow now we've got some cool tech over here and some cool tech over here and some things happen and what's this contagion thing oh my gosh we're all beset by this stuff and you know cyber papacy the demons showed up mm-hmm. and then they started tearing into people and the people start panicking oh my gosh what are we going to do and then jean malro comes over and says oh we'll save you and then the companies that had this amazing tech Revelations all of a sudden had amazing breakthroughs that managed to arm people that that could, you know, stand toe to toe with with the Jiangxi and and not get just ripped to shreds. And then they had all of a sudden some medical breakthroughs that, oh, look, we can cure the contagion now. And then they had some more technological breakthroughs that helped them contain it and then push it back. And now everybody's like, oh, look, we were they, you saved us, these corporate saviors. And so you look at the companies, these big companies, these mega corporations that that out of the goodness of their hearts – donated all this stuff to push back this this contagion they're looked at more as as oh they saved us my family wouldn't be here if we didn't have that magical amazing technological breakthrough that so-and-so corporation put out for us and they just gave it to us it's fantastic like the cyber papacy gave away cybernetics and the god net and all that stuff so you've got that that too and then you know the the out of the goodness of the corporate heart they've established this this bottom layer of basic income basic as they call it that, that everybody gets that oh that's you know that's the social safety net we don't have to worry about that. you know our lives are taken care of these benevolent corporations they they take care of us they feed us and they house us and they provide things for us so we can look for jobs with the zuzu and never mind that that you know as i'm doing these things i'm consuming this stuff that tells me what i'm supposed to do um but this is really for our best so they've they've totally bought into this whole hive mind of of the corporation is all and this is you know it doesn't get any worse but never forget the fact that i don't care what level of the company you're at even the ceo of a corporation the moment that CEO stops, becomes more of a liability for the company than, than he or she is an asset, there's somebody in the wings that's waiting to, to de- demote them so that the corporation does better because the corporations are almost entities in and of themselves. They almost have a life of their own, and that's part of the Cosm's energy managing – this corporation and this person's no longer making a profit, so these people – it's kind of the fifth column that we haven't even talked – touched on about, which is one of my favorite aspects of Pan Pacifica, um, that all of a sudden this this person or people deposes this, cor- this, this CEO that's no longer – of value to the corporation and these new people take over and all of a sudden people down here are like, Oh, look, we have new management. We're under new management. It's going to be a different corporation. We're not going to do the evil stuff we did before. We're going to do new evil stuff. So. Yeah. I'll, uh, add or, or add to the, um, it's on the surface level it might seem and when you read the the pan pacifica source book it might seem like some type of utopia but it's definitely a dystopia everything is uh, behind or anything quote unquote worthwhile is behind 
some type of EULA or paywall or you need uh, to get your benefits through your, your job. So when Jay, you're talking about like the, the wealth and stuff, the wealth is almost always tied to your position in a, in a company. Um, and the higher up you go, the more benefits you get. And as seen with like uh, the, the gene mods for the, for whoever wants them, they have the EULAs. And if you don't continue with your payment on your subscription, then they cease to function. If, if there's something that's keeping you alive or you can't live without, oh, well, you should have paid your, your monthly subscription fee. I definitely see where either through uh, the, uh, there, there's parts in it where they, uh, any, anybody who wants to be like a, a blind person who wants to be able to see or a deaf person who wants to be able to, to hear, that is uh, provided for them, I would say, but you have a catch with that that that's going to be here's the job that you work to to pay it off or here's a trial period that you get you get to see for <laughs> a month and then if if you don't make your payment or you don't keep your job then you you lose that benefit so everything all all the good things can be taken away at the whim of a corporation it's not a utopia Rico is not a good high lord. You can't get to a high lord status being good. You are pure and utter evil. You might try to convince yourself at night before you put your head on your pillow that you're a good person and everybody else is bad. But no, deep inside you are. <laughs> you are evil. Um, so with the, the corporate structure, do you keep that in mind? I want to say, as Jay said, cyberpunk uh, is, is a good way to kind of look at some of the things the uh, the is it 2077 is that the the recent game the newest that, video game the, yeah. like well the hopefully not spoilers or anything but the the main character does something and kind of gets kicked out and loses like everything like their bank accounts wiped and their status is, is pretty similar in pan pacifica uh, johnny it, mnemonic yeah, you know, all of, all those type of tropes on, on TV and video games and comics you can look into because Torg Eternity is very much a uh, a trope and genre type game. So going from the corporate culture, let's get into kind of the anti-corporate culture. So like the gangs, the people that are at the bottom and they know it and instead of trying to get the job, they instead are fighting the man, so to speak. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on, like, the gang culture or the outcast cultures? So you got different levels of that. Uh, you've basically got your gangs on the bottom level. Uh, then you've got your ghost syndicates, kind of like the next level up. And then you've got your lone wolves who are just trying to do everything on their own. And I will say, because I mentioned it and then even said, I, I've been playing Cyberpunk like 2013, 2020, all them since like 1994. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I do is very like fed in by that. So <clears throat> a lot of my opinions kind of go that way. So the gangs are generally allowed to exist uh, by the corporations because they give the corporations a level of plausible deniability. They can send weapons and money or whatever to a gang through an intermediary and have the gang do things for them. Uh, now, not all the gangs are patsies for corporates. They Very few of them start that way, but eventually a lot of them kind of end up going that way. Gangs are generally made of... Uh, you know, youths who don't want to toe the line, man, uh, you know, to the, uh, because if you're part of the, the Kanawa plan and you're on Kanawa basic, you are very limited in what you're doing. And if you get a job with another company, like if you work for Panama Gene Tech or whatever, then, okay, now you've just traded in your Kanawa Zuzu for a Panama Gene Tech Zuzu, and all your accounts are paid from them, but it's still almost the exact same thing. You're essentially a wage slave having to do whatever the corporation tells you. Again, the parallels to cyber papacy are very strong because it's the same idea. You go work in the field for six days a week, 
you know, and then the seventh day you get off to pray uh, in the God net. But <clears throat> so some people, they just can't, they don't want, they can't do it, right? And then they rebel, they go and live in the slums or somewhere else. Ironically, there's probably a lot of open, empty, uh, free real estate in Pan Pacifica of places that were scoured by uh, Jiangxi and infected. May even still have pockets of them. Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, you know, so gangs can still find places. Gangs have always found places mm -hmm. to hang out. So they're always a danger. Uh, but corporate security is big in Pan Pacifica, but unlike in cyberpunk or cyber papacy, uh, they pretty much always use dazing weapons. They can, they take them alive. And what happens to these gang members that are taken alive? They're pressed into corporate servitude. Uh, the way I run it in my game is if you are charged, you basically, if you are found guilty of acting against a corporation, you become that corporation's property. Your last name is changed to that corporation's name. And you have to work a certain number of a certain amount of time before you are freed, essentially. And you get your name back. Um, but a representative from the corporation might come to you with a better offer since, oh, you've been in these gangs. Maybe if you want your time taken off, you want your freedom, you can do this. And it's almost always a trap that goes poorly, especially with the law of intrigue. But then you've got the next level up. You've got the ghost syndicates, you've got the triads, tongs, yakuza, uh, all of the different groups that existed as organized crime before the invasion. And they had a much larger infrastructure and the corporations aren't able to take them out quite as cleanly. And in fact, even though uh, I we mentioned this in a previous one, like the the organized crime are not good guys, like in the Nile mm -hmm. Empire, right? They're not good people, but they're still working against uh, the corporations for the most part. They are. Uh, I seem to recall that was. In, in old in classic Torg, I believe, um, kind of had a lot of contacts with the Yakuza. Doesn't mm -hmm. really seem to be mentioned as much this time. If anything, a lot of the organized crime, the ghost syndicates, are against them. Although there was rumors that maybe the leader was really <laughs> a coalition of them. But uh, that gives you a little bit more freedom because you can you can look at the real world to uh, give you inspiration for what kind of uh, organized crime there is, they can still be infiltrated by gangs, they can still be infiltrated by corporations, but they're generally kind of an, a tier up. And then after that, you've got your lone wolves, which are basically like PC level individuals uh, mm -hmm. who uh, are uh, somehow exceptional and they've either had enough, uh, they were a gang member, they were in the Yakuza or a triad or something, or they were a corporate or a corporate assassin and they've just had enough, they were betrayed too many times, and now they're working against the corporations. Or, it's also worth mentioning, Kanawa is not the only big bad corporation. There's uh, a few huge conglomerates that came in from Marketplace. There's the Raru block. Mm -hmm. There's another one whose name I can't remember. <laughs> but... Um, and that's just in Pan Pacifica. There's other enemies that they have back on Marketplace as well. So you also have individuals from these cor other corporations infiltrating, working with the Delphi Council, waiting to stab the Delphi Council in the back. So there's plenty of... What this means, essentially, and I know we've gone over it before in the Cosm Card thing, but there's a lot of people available for connections and betrayals and all that kind of stuff in Pan Pacifica, all the way from the lowest gang member to the highest corporate assassin. Mark, your thoughts? Hantu Limited, I think. Is, is that it? One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, and this really plays into the, the, um, the idea that there's always a fifth column in Pan Pacifica. There's always, Oh, what's the – oh, dog on it. There's a world law behind that, and I can't – I just shot it out of my ear. Um, there's always somebody lurking to betray you, um, and and that kind of really drives the, the gangs and these these lower-level, lower-tier groups, in, in my opinion, because you – 
the corporations need a they. They need an other. They need someone that that they're opposed to, and it's the people. It's the outcasts. It's the ones who buck society, and and don't want to fit in. They're the ones because they're, it's all their their fault. Whatever whatever the problem is, that's their fault. And they can always they need that group of people to be able to tie the problems to them. Why can't we get rid of the contagion? Well, there's a whole group of people down here who don't want to do what we've asked you to do in order to keep that from festering. Why can't we get rid of, you know, organized crime? Well, there's a whole bunch of people that have created this black market society that 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 crime thrives in. And if we could just get rid of them, we could get rid of organized crime. Never mind the fact that the Yakuza and the rest of it, they absolutely use them for things that they couldn't do openly because that would taint the corporate name. And so you've got, you've got these off the books assets like Jay was talking about where you have, you have these agents that work for your corporation, but can't be tied to your corporation. And so some, some mid manager or some low level executives job is to manage those connections and they look bad so that if they're ever exposed, the corporation can cut them off and say, well, that was just somebody who through drug addiction and family problems went bad and this, that and the other. They don't really reflect our business. Never mind. He was actually following orders from a, a senior executive to do stuff that would help the corporation out. So all of those little subgroups down there at the bottom are kind of that's your, your, your lower tier underworld kind of stuff that keeps that that air. In Pan Pacifica, that environment will always be there because the world laws keep it there. But by the same token, the corporations want it and they don't want it at the same time. It's, it's a it's a vicious circle. They want it because they can use it and they know it and they can't get rid of it. And so they're going to take advantage of it. But they, if they could get rid of it, they would. But the world laws don't let them get rid of it because that's what keeps their corporation recycling and new talent getting up there instead of stagnating so i'll just uh add to that with the always remember the the law of intrigue as soon as you have more than one person you're gonna have somebody who's a mole that's it gonna yep. be, it's law, be that's the law of intrigue. um and that's what one of the reasons where the lone wolves they've realized that and they're like i can't trust anybody besides myself because they've seen it too many times and they as jay said they might have came from a gang or a ghost syndicate or even the corporate rule uh, corporate culture and they just realize every time i get involved with any group somebody <laughs> ends up <laughs> betraying me so i can only do it myself um, the Delphi Council has uh, various ways that they try to get around that. They'll have one person do one part of a mission, and then the next person do the next part, and they don't know anything about the others just to kind of keep that uh, the, the cell type. Uh, compartmentalized. Yeah, they'll car compartmentalize. They'll have different cells that are one or very few people, um, and that's just something that it – even though it can affect the gangs, even though it can affect the ghost syndicates, it also affects the big corporations as well. And they have even more because they have more people to it. So it's like everybody's agents, double agents, triple agents, all types of fun uh, that you can have. And one of the things that also is, is a kind of a, a theme that we've been uh, talking around is people are resources, there's the whole and instead of like uh i remember back in the day be before i was of working age my dad saying he went to personnel to you know i went to personnel to talk to them about something and then at some point it became human resources which always kind <laughs> of sounded strange because in my mind resources is something you just used up until there is this kind of nothing less left um and that's how i see the 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 corporate structure in Pan Pacific, as Jay said, everybody's just a cog that can be replaced. So you have these resources, these people, and then when they're not, um, they're, they're, they're no longer useful, who cares what, what happens to them? You'll bring somebody in, and the only time you really care is if it's either yourself or possibly a, a close, a very close friend or family member. Otherwise, 
it was somebody else. Lucky it wasn't me. I, I'm doing my thing, so they must have just not did, you know, the thing that they should have been doing. And it also kind of, um, and we won't get into this because I just noticed the time, but it will lead to talking about how they, when they take over other worlds, they do leave some of that world open with the old world laws, not because of any um, national park type, oh, we need to preserve things to, to, to keep it how it was, but a, well, we might be able to use that in the future. So it's not a museum type, oh, let's keep it to remind ourselves. It's a, we might need that in the future so we don't want to completely destroy everything. And that's where you get kind of the reservations on uh, Kadandra and the other places that Marketplace has invaded. Um, So thank you very much for listening or viewing this episode of the Delphi Council debriefings. Be like Luke and send us an email at <laughs> torgdcd at gmail.com. Maybe you can give us some food for thought with some questions or comment. And until next time, we hope you have fun in your own cosiverse. Bye.